welcome into the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star. Hey, if you're new here or you haven't yet, please consider subscribing and helping us feed a hungry hippo. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Today we're taking a look at what sold on Macari. We're going to look at the month of August on this platform. I have pulled up all of my plush sales to share with you. All three of them. <laughs> don't get too excited. Uh, and then I pulled up just another four highlights to talk about with you. What we actually have been selling the most of on Macari is our comics. And we're selling the comics that sell for anywhere from eight upwards to $100 one time. We had a really good one. Um, so I pulled up a couple comics to share with you, but I did not want to sit here for 15 minutes and go through comics with you because. That would be boring. So generally speaking, we'll talk about how comics sell on Macari, but we don't need to look at all of the sales. We sold a couple of other items we're going to talk about. In general, our comic books are selling really well on Macari. It's probably what we sell the most of on this platform. And we probably sell the most comics singularly on Macari. As far as in bundles, I see that a lot more on Poshmark and some on eBay. We do offer a discounted shipping on eBay for the comics and people will bundle them. But I don't think eBay buyers think that way as much. They're not trained as much to make bundles. Poshmark buyers, they're trained to get likes and then get an offer and then they do bundles. And the shipping on Poshmark that the buyers pay, I feel, is kind of high for small lightweight items. So buyers will tend to make bundles to get the most bang for their buck, if that makes sense. But as far as not bundles, just selling single comics in all price ranges, we do really well on Macari. But everything else overall has been really slow. I will be completely transparent with you here and honest. In April, when Macari first implemented their changes, it was April Fool's Day. I remember that. It was April 1st because everyone thought, is this a joke? Are they kidding? But Macari took away all the fees for sellers. So we no longer pay fees on here. So, for instance, this unicorn you're looking at, uh, she sold for 14 bucks, So we get the full $14. That's our take. I do free shipping. So I have to go print a label on Pirate Ship to ship her. She costs about $4 or $5. She's very lightweight. Pirate Ship does have really inexpensive shipping. It is a good place to print labels for even not USPS, for people who send really heavy items through FedEx and UPS. They give really good commercial rates. I'm not affiliated with them. I just really like them and I, I use them all the time. In fact, you can see up here on my, I have a fast bookmark to them. Um, and then you can also pay with cards that have cash back. So if you have a business credit card, or even if you're a sole prop and you have a credit card that gives you cash back, you can use those to pay for your stuff on your labels on Pirate Ship and make a little extra money on something you're going to buy anyway. That's my that's why I like Pirate Ship. Um, so I digress. In April, when Macari implemented the changes, sellers no longer paid fees. Buyers paid those fees. Buyers paid tax. Buyers were paying shipping because we we flipped our business model about a year ago to charging shipping on all of our platforms. When buyers check out on Macari now, they see a whole laundry list of costs. And it's been referred to by several resellers I know as looking at a DoorDash or an Uber Eats receipt where there's all these fees that come out. It's overwhelming to the buyers. So I think that's why the sales have gone downhill. After they first implemented these changes in April, they did have the ability for sellers to lower all of their prices by 10%. They encouraged you to do it. It was a simple one click of one button to do it. And we did it. We lowered all of our prices on Macari. At that time, we had about 2,000 active listings by 10%. Because in our minds, we were going to pay that in fees anyway. So we did that. And we had the best two weeks of sales on Macari 
probably in the lifetime that we've been selling on Macari. We saw a huge increase in sales. We were shipping almost every day. We sold a lot. And then it started to, to kind of like trickle off and it became back to normal. So we had like the best two weeks ever. We had all these sales and then it trickled down to where we were selling kind of at a normal pace. Macari's never been our biggest platform. Macari is probably third. eBay obviously is number one. Poshmark is number two. Macari and Poshmark sometimes take turns though. Um, I think I've said that on this channel before. I feel like when Poshmark is really selling a lot, Macari is slow and then they'll, they'll switch places. I would love to see both of them do really well at the same time. But for us, for seven years, I always feel like it's one or the others banging out, except in Q4, they'll both usually do pretty good for us. But from the end of April, after that two week increase in sales, probably through even the summer slowdown, we were still seeing sales trickle in on Macari the way they always have. Slower than eBay, less than Poshmark usually, but still consistent, consistent and what is expected for this platform. And recently it's just almost trickled off to, I hate to say this, but if it weren't so easy for me to cross post to Macari with, with less perfectly the way I have my business processes set up, I might refrain from posting on there for a while. I would leave everything up. If you've already got listings somewhere, anywhere, this doesn't just apply to Macari. I've always told people, if you've already done the work, leave it up. It'll sell eventually or it'll sell on, on another platform and you can take it down. So everything that's up, I would leave clearly and I would still send out offers because why not? But as far as putting up new, um, if I was doing this manually, if I was having to actually list on Macari manually, I would probably hold off until Q4 was over and just put all of my focus into eBay and Poshmark. But because it's one extra click to add Macari to my repertoire, when I'm cross posting from List Perfectly, I can just one or two clicks and have Macari done. So it's a no brainer for me to keep listing there and hopefully it'll pick up in Q4. But the sales have been slower on this platform and I blame it on the changes. I think there's just too much on the back end. Like I mentioned, it is a laundry list of charges and fees that these buyers are seeing on the back end. And it's a lot. Whether free shipping is really free or not, whether my $20 free jeans are the same price as yours with $10, 10 ship. It's still just everything else. It just looks too much. As a buyer who doesn't really understand shipping or retail versus commercial rates or profits or any of that, when you go to check out and you see all these fees, it can seem overwhelming and seem like a lot. And maybe people aren't shopping on here as much, which is the big reason why we came back to free shipping. It's one less fee. It's one less thing they're seeing. We're still listing items at the same because free is not really free. But if a buyer can get a $20 pair of jeans that says free shipping and then it just has the taxes and the fees and all of that on the back end, I think it's a little less overwhelming or scary, for lack of a better term, to a buyer than having all of those other fees tacked on. Does that make sense? So we've gone back to free shipping. Um, whatever we had in there listed with charging shipping on it, we left alone because again, we've already put the work in. But all of our new listings that we've been putting in have free shipping and I do delist and relist about 10 a day. So that is my take on Macari. Full transparency, sales are bad. And this is what I think happened. I do know that we had a huge increase in April when we lowered everything by 10%, but that's because that was something Macari was doing to encourage buyers to shop. So when you pushed that little button that they gave you to lower your prices, they did notify anyone who had ever previously liked your items that your price was lowered. It was a discount. It was a sale. Psychologically, buyers love that. And so we sold a lot. And that kind of trickled off. That excitement wore off. And people were shopping almost like normally. And then I think they just started to see all these fees and all these charges on the back end and they're probably either shopping on other platforms or just not shopping at all. So that is my take. Let me know what you think in the comments. How is your Mercari doing?
do you cross post to Mercari? Have you stopped cross posting to Mercari? What do you sell there? Like, if you're willing to talk about it, some people don't. But like I said, we sell a lot of comics, a lot of toys. But see, but we only had three plush sales in August. We used to sell mostly plush remotes and comics on here. So I don't know. But let me know in the comics. In the comics? Let me know in my comics, guys. Let me know in the comments if you're willing to talk about it and have a discussion. Um, you don't have to reveal what you sell if you don't want to. I just kind of want to hear from other sellers and see how it's going. I've heard from other sellers on Instagram. I've heard from other sellers in my Facebook group. I've had emails and private message discussions with a ton of resellers in the community. What I'm telling you seems to be the general consensus. This is after tons of conversations and us talking about it and trying to figure out what went wrong. That's the general consensus. But you are more than free to chime in down below. That all said, I will still show you some of our sales. So we had three plush sales, like I said. We had this dandy unicorn. I've had a lot of these dandy unicorns. This one has the pink, pink hair, pink ears, pink horn, pink hooves. And they had some that were blue and some that were purple. But whatever color the theme is, the horse will usually have all those colors. And then the little stars on her hiney. She's almost like a little, my little pony wannabe. Sold for 14 and again, probably about four to ship, probably 50 cents cost. So $9.50 a profit on a dandy is not bad. Dandy is one of those brands that I always recommend people to source. If you're okay with filler and bread and butter, just source them all. If the cost is good, don't pay like over a dollar or two. If you're not okay with bread and butter or filler or you don't have a volume-based business, do your due diligence and comp them. Some dandies go for a lot of money. Gund, bread and butter brand, solid, but there's some there's some vintage ones and some older ones and some larger ones that will sell for more money. This little dude sold for $10 on a best offer, and he was probably about four to ship as well, plus the 50 cents cost out of a wholesale lot. So he was like five fifty profit. And then here's some poops. If you guys don't know my theory about poops, <laughs> the poops and selling wholesale, I did do a whole video on it. I'll have it come up at the end if you haven't seen it. It's a it's a good video to watch if you ever buy large boxes or wholesale purchases, just to hear my take and how I feel about the poops. These are poops. I put four of them together. I did take a best offer on them. I had them up for 14. I took a best offer of $12.60. This is one of my older listings. So you can see I still had a $4.99 shipping fee on that. So I made $12.60. And these came in one of those really big American thrift Gaylords. So they were probably $0.25 cents at the most a piece, maybe a lot less based on weight and what I paid for the Gaylord. But we'll say even a quarter, just for ease of math, they were probably less. A dollar for all four bears. So I made eleven sixty on some poops. On my poops. Okay. <laughs> the plush. Jean skirt. I talk a lot on this channel about not overlooking denim jackets, denim skirts, booty shorts. Brands that I would leave behind if I found the brand in full length jeans. There are some brands that could be 10 cents or fill this bag for free. And I would be like, I don't want them. But those same brands, if I found mini skirts, booty shorts and denim jackets in, I would bring them home. I'd pay two bucks for them. It's, they're like their own entity, I guess. Anyway, this is Mossimo, it's Target. I do like their jeans too. This sold for $10 on a best offer. Plus they paid $7 delivery fee. So I made the whole $10. This was about a dollar, I believe, from a thread out box. So $9 profit. There you go. I do like how easy it is to do these what sold videos with Macari's new system because it's very easy for me to sit here and tell you what my profit was. If I do that with Poshmark or eBay, which I don't, and this is why, I have to sit there with each item and the calculator and figure things out. So I just kind of try to estimate or focus more on a theme. This what sold is going to be about bread and butter brands or this one's going to be about winter clothes all right this was mine i purchased this in 2022 i went to salem massachusetts and i actually wore it for a couple of years and then um 
the pocket came loose and I'm not someone who sews the pocket came loose and I quite honestly just got tired of the pullover I would rather have a full zip hoodie that I could pull on like a jacket and just zip up I sold this for nine dollars plus seven dollars shipping and I believe my original cost at Walmart was probably like 15 bucks but I got to wear it for a full year I got to wear it in Salem and then I got to pass it on so don't overlook cleaning out your closets and don't force yourself to keep something just because you bought it. If it's uncomfortable, if you don't like it, you know, our general rule of thumb, we clean out our closets probably once a year. If we haven't worn it in six months, we're probably not going to wear it and figure out why. You can even ask yourself the why. Our rule is just if we haven't worn it in six months, it's going and we resell it. But ask yourself why. Do I, am I just saving it for nice occasions? Then keep it. But if you're just, passing it by because it's too big or too small or you don't like the way it fits sell it the beauty of being a reseller is that we can clean out our houses and sell our junk to other people who find it to be treasure one person's junk right a couple comics i want to show you and then i'll let you go i know i've been talking a lot but that's what i do i like to tell stories marvel war of the realms for eight bucks and then another one for eight bucks we had a couple for a little bit less a couple for a little bit more Again, we sell a lot of comics on Macari. We do buy our comics in bulk. And they come out to about a dollar a piece, sometimes a little less. All right, again, if you want to do, if you want to do, if you want to do any input, if you want to leave any input on the Macari situation as far as how they changed their fee structure back in April, what buyers see when they're checking out, all the extra stuff on the end. Are you doing free shipping? Are you charging? Are you even listing on Macari? What's going on? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to join our Facebook group, Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. Until next time, go be productive. Go make some money. And as always, thanks for watching. Y'all are the best. Bye.